of the messengers. Uh, there is five pillars of practices that Islam, um, Muslim, they should practice. The pillars of practice in Islam. The first one is the testimony. The testimony. What's the testimony? It is the entrance for Islam. If somebody say it out of his heart, he become a Muslim. In Islam, we don't need to, to baptize. We don't need to do a certain things to become a Muslim. Just you need to say these words, which is I bear witness that there is no God worthy to be worshipped but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. If you say that, believing in that, you become a Muslim. And probably this is one of the, you know, if you, if, if you think about it, when the first part, which is, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, it's like recognition from you, to whom are you worshipping? And probably this is one of the uh, uh, most important things that Islam came to correct in the form of religions. This, because if you know, uh, and the, Christianity has a lot of sects, for example. There's, some of them believe in, 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 uh, in the Father, different entity than the Son. Or, uh, uh, the, or some of them they say, no, it's one God. Some of them believe that the origin is the Holy Spirit. Some of them believe that the origin is the Father. Some of them they praise Mary or dispraise Mary. There's different concepts. The concept of God is different between the sects and Christianity. Jehovah's Witness, Seventh day Adventists, uh, Catholics, different. Islam came to clarify that point. He says there is no God but Allah. We should not worship anybody but the creator of this universe, the one who created everybody. When we say the other part, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, which means uh, I bear witness that the messenger Muhammad of Allah is the one the one who I'm supposed to follow in order for me to reach God so I did define my Lord which is God Allah and I did define the way to reach that Lord which is the way of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him which is Al-Quran the second pillar of Islam is the Salah prayer as Muslims we pray five times a day we have morning prayer Noon prayer, afternoon prayer, after sunset time prayer, and night time prayer. During the prayer, we uh, direct ourselves toward a certain direction, which is Mecca in Saudi Arabia, which is the holy uh, mosque of Kaaba there. And uh, we do certain movements. We bow, we prostrate, we recite Quran, we thank Allah, we ask Allah or God for whatever we wish, and so. What's the job of the prayer? Quran says, Inna salata tanha al fahsha'i wal munkar, which means prayers helps us in preventing the evil and the bad deeds. Because there's like you're standing in front of Allah or in front of God five times a day. You're reciting and gaining the uh, knowledge and the wisdom and the guidance from the book of God five times a day. You Ask God for forgiveness five, five, five times a day. You thank God five times a day and so and so. It increases it increase God consciousness in your heart. So it helps you in preventing to do any evil or bad deeds. Five, because if you pray once a week, for example, or once a month, we forget. We are a forgetful creature. We forget. After like two, three, four hours, the effectiveness of that prayer goes. So you need that boost five times a day to, to, to remind you whom you are you are a servant of who what you should do and so and so uh, the second pillar of uh, uh, practice of Islam which is uh, uh, after we link ourselves to God during the prayer which is the most important link the second thing is uh, we are living now by our uh, we're not living by ourselves we're living in, in a society so we need to link ourselves to people what's the best way to link yourself to people is by what by helping people. What's the most common way of helping people is the charity, is giving money to others. In Islam, we pay a certain amount of charity, which is two and a half percent out of extra money or frozen assets that we have. It's not like taxes. In the taxes, you pay out of your income. The charity in Islam, no. You pay out of the extra money that you have. It goes basically to the need of the Islamic nation or the poor in general. Uh, it, it links or it breaks the ice between the rich and the poor, make people closer to each other, and so on. So, at the time of uh, Islamic empire, uh, when everybody paid his or her uh, uh, charity, 
they were trying to find somebody to take that charity that they could not find. They were having a really hard time in finding poor people. Because if everybody pays, you're not going to see a poor people uh, uh, in the world. Uh, the third pillar of uh, Islam, of practices, which is uh, uh, fasting. Uh, Muslims fast in the month of Ramadan. Uh, Quran states, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O believers, fasting has been prescribed on you as being prescribed on people who came before you, which is Jews and Christians, so you may become more obedient to God. What's fasting in Islam? I think there is a fasting, of course, in Judaism and Christianity, as far as I know. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Fasting in Islam is abstaining from eating or drinking or having sex for those who are married from dawn until sun sunset time. There is no sex, by the way, in Islam without marriage. There is no boyfriend, girlfriend. All right. There is a. Uh, when you have, want to have, when you love somebody, you want to uh, get closer to her or closer to him, you have to have the tie of marriage between you guys. This is Islam. So uh, basically, this is the uh, the thing that we practice. How could I become more obedient to God by not drinking or eating? I mean, that thirst and hunger. How could it make me, you know, uh, more obedient to God? Well, you're doing this for who? That fasting, for God. Right? As if you're going, for example, and buying like a, a, a flower or a gift for your fiancé, for your husband. During that action, the other part in your heart, because you're doing it for, he, for who? For him or for her. Same. You're fasting for the sake of God, for God. That thirst and hunger that I feel, it reminds me with God in every moment of my day, which increased God, God, increased God consciousness in my heart, which reflects on my attitude and my manners and everything, so I become more obedient to God. And also during the month of Ramadan, we appreciate the value of water and food that God blessed us with, that we have it by granted, we never think about. When you, when you don't eat or drink from morning until night time, when you come, at the time of, you know, you want to break your uh, fast, you want to eat at the night time, after sunset time, you really appreciate the meaning and the blessing of water that God gave, gave you. You really appreciate the blessing of food that God granted you with. So you become more appreciative to God. And another thing, during the, uh, the month of Ramadan, we feel the poor. We feel how those people feel. How those you know, poor people in Africa and, and Southeast uh, Asia, how do they feel? How they're living? I mean, we don't know that. You cannot feel the others until you live their life. And fasting helps you to do so. So you see people more generous in the month of Ramadan. They pay more to the poor because they feel them more. And also during the month of Ramadan, it's like a training. <coughs> it's like an intensive course of 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 worshipping during that month. As if you're going, for example, to the gym, you hold like, you know, heavy uh, weight and stuff like that, and you become fatigued and tired, sweating and that. But that makes you more eligible after that to be stronger and you lift heavier weight, right? Same. When you train yourself by not to do a lawful things, which is, you know, drinking regular water or eating regular food, you're more strong to say no to something you should not drink, which is wine or alcohol in Islam. By the way, alcohol is you know, prohibited in Islam. You can, you're more able to say no to unlawful food. Like for example, we don't eat pork and so on. So there's different things also we, can, we do not eat. But it's like training. If you can prevent having sex with your wife during the daytime, you can and train yourself for that, you can say no for somebody else more. You're stronger for that. Uh, the fifth pillar of practices with the pilgrimage. Uh, we go once in a lifetime, or the obligatory part is going once in a lifetime for those who can afford it physically and financially. It's going to uh, uh, Mecca in Saudi Arabia to visit uh, uh, the mosque of Haram and Masjid al-Haram and do some other rituals 
following the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him we believe or Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says that all the prophets perform that pilgrimage and uh, if you have seen have you seen the Kaaba the uh, pilgrimage on the TV or at all did you see anything yeah it's that, that cubic, cubic building, building I don't know if you have do you have guys a pay, uh, poster or anything shows the Kaaba okay they don't have it yeah that book you know, see it's very clear picture here I have this, this small dot you see here this is the it's a huge big building you know it's a cubic building it's covered here with a with a with a kind of uh, texture you know it's uh, black and, and, and gold in color uh, this building is being considered to be the first building that God is being worshipped on earth. Uh, it's being built by Prophet uh, uh, Adam, peace be upon him, or his son, Prophet Sheath. There's two, two opinions here. But it is the first building, the first structure that God worshipped on earth. And it's considered to be a holy place because God has decided to do so. So when we pray as Muslims, we direct ourselves toward that place. We don't worship that place. There's nothing in it. Those walls, is just walls. There's no statues, nothing. We've been ordered not to prostrate to any statues. I think the Christians have been ordered to do so too. So we do not prostrate to any statues, to any picture, to anything. We just prostrate to God, the one who created us, the one who created everything. Basically, those are the pillars of Islam and the pillars of faith. Uh, there is some, a lot of commonalities between the religions, but there is some differences also, also between the religions. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the differences a little bit between Islam and Christianity mainly, because I think that most of the people here are either Muslims or, or Christians. The first difference between Islam and Christianity starts uh, at the time of uh, the original sin, as they call it in, in the Old Testament and the Christians. As Muslims, uh, actually, actually the Old Testament states that, uh, that uh, Satan, Lucifer, seduced Eve, and Eve seduced Adam, and Adam ate from a forbidden tree, and that's why he being expelled from, from the paradise, and that's why Eve is considered to be the origin of the sin, and is being punished with pain, which is menstruation, suckling, giving, you know, breastfeeding, and uh, having pregnancy and labor, and so on. So it's considered to be like a, a punishment from God. Islam does not agree upon this opinion. Islam, uh, Quran states, فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ That means, Satan seduced them both. Both of them responsible of doing such a sin. And Islam does not consider those things, which is the menstruation, suckling child, and so on, so on, pregnancy, as a punishment from God. This is the will of God. A woman cannot be woman without those things, and male without, cannot be male without other things. So this is a nature that God created us with. It's not a punishment. So Islam also uh, deal with the male and female regarding punishment, regarding reward, and, and equally. Uh, the other thing is the heritage of the sin. And according to the uh, Christian faith, that, or uh, the Christian faith, that uh, uh, the, the sin, the original sin is being inherited until Jesus, peace be upon him, came and being crucified uh, to uh, save people from all of those uh, their sins and uh, from that original sin and some other things you know uh, the concept of the sacrifice and sacrifice himself and so on so in Islam we don't believe that there is a heritage of a sin because God is more just than having a sin of somebody else on me for example if you go to the court of law and the judge tells you I'm going to sentence you 20 years in prison because your great grandfather did this and that. What do you tell the judge? It's not justice. I was not there. We all agree that Adam is a human. He's our father, yes, but he's a human. He's not God. He's not son of God. He's, not, he's a human. So I, how could I be responsible of somebody, some other human you know, sins? I cannot be responsible of my direct father's sins. So how about my great-great-grandfather? 
So in Islam, we don't believe in that. We believe that everybody is accountable of his own.